So this is me reacting. I'll admit this is no longer quite so natural because it's my second attempt at recording this, but here we go. But let's have a look at this trailer. Uh, it's The Last Duel by Ridley Scott. Uh, I, I've, I've heard of some films by Ridley Scott which I don't think are quite so good, but I remember I liked uh, Robin Hood. Oh yeah, I already gave this a dislike in my first reaction. Um, yeah, Ridley Scott. I liked Robin Hood. I know sometimes some Ridley Scott movies are be, but uh, not bad actually. There is only one question that matters. Do you swear on your life that what you say is true? So much blue. That's one of the things I mentioned. I mean, you got like, see, you know, you want to make people sort of feel in the moment. You know, like all these people, you want to relate to them and the characters. Why would you pull someone out of it by making everything look grey, brown, or blue? They always do that in historical settings. You should, you should just have it, you know, more. Maybe, obviously, change the colour to suit, you know, certain things to intensify the colour and bring it out and you know that sort of editing. But you should make it kind of look real. I don't know why they're making it so very blue. Like, I look at winter and it's, even when it's sort of overcast and you've got that blue hue going, it's never, it's not that grey blue. It's like they hate colour. Which is kind of like the apartheid, really, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no matter how many times I see it, it just hurts to watch. That that's there. So let's talk about the helmet. Is it a helmet? I mean, yes, it's a helmet, but it's oh god. Yes. So anyway, look at his. You can see both of his eyes, but. Look, if you want to make a character look unique, there are many ways to do it. Oops. In fact, we'll have a look in a moment. Uh, so yeah, you've got all that, in, you know, civilian outfits. It was around here-ish when I did my first reaction. Here we go. Look at this. Put the sword down. If you want to make a person look unique. You can, you know, you can have their like the trims on the armor. You can have different types of armor. You can have all sorts of cool designs, but also colors. If you can have a World War One or two, you know, or modern warfare type of thing, where everyone's wearing, all the good guys are wearing the same green uniform and the helmets, and they got the dirt and mud all over their face, and you can tell which one's Bob and which one's Gary. Then why the hell can you not do that in a medieval movie? You've got, you can have bright colours, you know, you can have like, here's the yellow guy, the green guy, the blue guy, the red guy, and you can have it representing things like, you know, someone who's more of a calm, measured temperament is in blue, and someone who's more hot-headed, drunken, belligerent type of guy in red, blood, passion, wine, all these sorts of things, you know, you can have all these things that have metaphorical meanings as well. And also the stuff emblazoned on their shields, like designs representing, again, you know, their fortitude, that they're unwavering in the face of the enemy, or that they're aggressive, or that they're cunning, or all these, these things that you can have representing your characters, and also easily identifying them, when instead they're doing stuff like this. And bearing in mind, normally when people talk about, oh, well, there's no, uh, making things historically accurate, blah, blah, blah. this is a custom job. I, I've never previously seen those helmets. And bearing in mind, that's another one, because you notice the brass trim. The earlier version was a slightly different shape, and it did not have the brass trim. So there are two of those, at least, uh, as far as I can tell. So they haven't they haven't gone all well. I don't want it to be as historically accurate, because it costs too much. This is a custom job. They spent more money, not less, more money to make this look more shit. And like I said, it's not going to make the actors look more distinct because 
they've got you know the the designs and you can see them on a certain horse like one's on the black horse one's on a brown horse or you know i've got the red armor you've got the green armor or you know various things i mean even if they looked nearly identical if you have one person without the helmet and they put their helmet on or you know they cut their kit on or whatever and one's coming from the left and one's coming from the right and that's a classic thing you see in cowboy movies usually because they're right-handed the good guy is on the left and the bad guy is on the right. So you just do that. You know, I mean, that's just, again, those are just little examples off the top of my head. I'm not even in, I'm not even an expert in cinematography and directing and all that. And even I know these simple tricks, but yet these guys, it, fuck. <sighs> Yes, so did I. Based on a true story. <laughs> Based on a book about some things relating to a true story that happened, plus some other details have added in. That's how it usually goes. Like when he did Kingdom of Heaven, actually. That was a Ridley Scott movie, wasn't it? I think so. But that one wasn't very close to history at all. It was, you know, there was some excitement and lots of drama and all that, but it wasn't very real. Rob, well, it's unfair to say Robin Hood, because Robin Hood is itself a sort of a legend myth type of thing. So, yeah. Shock Legree entered our home. He attacked me. The accusation is false. I am telling the truth. The truth does not matter. Ah, <laughs> that's very fitting for this film. The truth does not matter. Yeah, you said it yourself, buddy. Oh, one of us has lied. Yes. Hmm. How do we solve this? Well, I don't know about four... I uh, noticed in the description it says the last duel, tale of betrayal and vengeance set against the brutality of 14th century France. Now, I don't know about France, but I know in England they had um, trial by jury by that time, if I remember rightly. In fact, I think it was around as early as the 1200s or so, or maybe earlier. Let us let God it's obviously you just... Well... Trial by jury, it's what we know today, you know, you you got you present the evidence, the people decide, hmm, this is true, this is false, and they come to a conclusion, and then you've got a guilty and innocent, you know. None of this. Also, I don't like this part. Wolf! He's not... You'd think he'd just been struck by a sledgehammer. Now, I've been hit full force with a two-handed sword before, obviously, blunt ones, and I was, and I was only wearing a padded gear instead of... Um, the full kit, including plate harness, where you feel even less. Uh, from my experience, you know, you feel there's a degree of padding from the gambus and all of that. Then you've got things like your mail armor, what they call chain mail as well. Um, that kind of deflects and absorbs and, you know, spreads force and that makes you feel attacks even less. And then with a full plate harness, from I mean, I've not, well, I've worn things like brigandine armor and that stuff. Again, you feel it even less. And it's getting to the point where only the most walloping solid blows can be felt, you know, that painfully. And yet, have a look. Are you ready? This guy's got a sword, probably weighs about two to three pounds. And he's doing more of an improvised blow. You know, this is a real fight. He's not having a chance to sort of do it like test cutting, prepare, okay, measure up, okay, yep, this is the perfect distance, and whack, this is just in the moment, whoosh, 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 dueling, penting, parry, a post, blah, 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 whack, so it's even, gonna, it's going to be even more crude, and yet, look at this guy, he flies halfway across the room, three, two, one, Wee! yeah, stupid, um, yep, just got a point, trial by jury, I mean, she didn't say it, but, yeah. It's a load of vanity. One woman defied a nation. And two men defied each other's bodies. That's nice. She's... 
Admittedly, the acting looks pretty good. October 15th, that's about a week or so after my birthday, actually. Anyway, yeah, so that was... That's why this film is not yet rated. I rate it silly. Um, so, yeah. Also, I noticed in the bottom, the bottom there. Very tiny writing. I don't even know if you, the audience, can see it. 2021. 20th Century Studios. <laughs> it's 21st Century. But anyway. Um, yeah. It's a bit dumb. Also, Last Duel. I don't know if I mentioned this, because I said it in my first reaction, the more genuine reaction, but... You know, more raw reaction rather, but um, it wasn't the last duel, it wasn't the last uh, judicial duel, and definitely not the last, you know, duel between people because those were going on until 1800s or possibly 1900s. I think the last duel fought was somewhere very late 1800s, early 1900s. And, that, and actually, that would include, you've got things like, you know, pistol duels and things like that, but sword duels. Again, they went on through the 1800s. In fact, there were laws made explicitly banning duels until, you know, it, through the 1800s. So much so, um, I haven't got Wicked Hour open at the moment, but I'll, I'll talk about it in another day. But on Wicked Hour, we've actually, you can, actually, I don't know if they've got it on there, but I know I've seen that there are treatises a historical treatises on how to fight, you know, dueling of swords. And there are a couple which include styles like sword and lantern. And uh, I've heard a theory that is because um, you have people fighting early at dawn, you know, before dawn, so they can do their duels without being arrested. And they're doing it so early, they're having to bring sources of light with them. But yet they're holding this extra item. And as with sword and pistol, sword and dagger, sword and another sword, all these sorts of things. Having the extra object in your hand can lead to tactical advantages. You know, if you had a sword and a wind-up torch, you can point it at the person's eyes and try to blind them, or you can try to swing the item, or you can use it as a parrying item to passively cover this area, or actively intercept a sword coming in towards you. You know. And, I mean, even if you're worried that the that an oil lamp or a candle is going to burn you. Frankly, since you're intercepting a sharp sword, I mean, there's a minor, there's a minor burn injury on your wrist compared with getting cut wide open with something sharp at four o'clock in the morning when the doctors probably aren't even going to be around to treat you unless you've agreed to have one join in your duel, which is another risk for a person who might get you arrested if they grass on you and all that. But, you know, anyway... That's my reaction. Not as raw as my first reaction, but yes. Uh, comment what you think. I'll recover and maybe make a more of a proper video later. <laughs> maybe talk about sword and lanterns fighting and stuff like that. And there's also the De De Targone shield. I've been meaning to make a video on that, by the way. Um, someone has requested it, but every time I tried to record one, it's gone badly because it's really difficult to find information on it. Um, so yeah, ta -ra.